Hi everyone. Happy Monday. It's crazy to think that another week has gone by already in the amazing world of COVID. So, but we're still being creative and making fun, amazing, magical, happy things. So, today's um, little cards are really fun. I always want to make things that, of course, bring you joy. Um, I had a little while ago, I had someone give me an idea. She said, I have an idea with bubbles. Laura, thank you. Shout out to Laura. Um, and so I thought that would be such a fun idea. So I'm going to present you with this kind of cute little idea today. Um, so we have this little fox guy and he says, happy day. Yay. And then, um, out of a piece of vellum, I took this little, um, I think it's about a half of an inch circle punch and then just a standard hole punch. And I punched out little pieces of vellum, um, that are, um, these two sizes here in case you can't see that on my mat. All right, so vellum is a kind of foggy colored kind of papered and you can kind of see through it a little bit. And so um, I thought this would be kind of a fun little idea, fun little card for us to play with today. Okay, all righty. So very first, if you would like to, um, something that you can do is, I don't see if it will work here, I believe that it will. If you have a little bit of a wet paintbrush, not very wet, a little bit. Um, this ink that I use is not waterproof, which means you can take your paintbrush and actually um, pick up a little bit of that color right along that edge there, and this will actually kind of colorize your little fox guy just a little bit. So I'm just giving him a little bit of color. All right, not very much, but what happens is that a wet paintbrush will reactivate that of the color of the ink pad there where I stamped, and so you can actually um, use some of that color and actually kind of color in. And again, it's going to be very light orange, not very dark, um, but you can actually color in a little bit of his face there. I can never remember which is correct. It's supposed to be his front stripe or his nose that's orange, I can, or his face is orange. I can never remember. I think it's his nose stripe that's supposed to be white. Okay, so there we go. So it just adds a little bit of color. You can kind of see. All right. Of course, you can take a marker or something and do that too. Okay, so now we have our little fox. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to use um, a little tiny bit of, of adhesive. Now, I'm going to tell you right off the bat that you can always see the glue on the back of vellum. Okay, so a trick to get out of that, weirdly enough, is to make your glue very thin. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to apply a little dot of glue. Hold on. A little dot of glue. I'm going to apply a dot of glue to my paper. Okay. I'm going to warn you right now, your fingers are going to get a little messy. Okay. But we're going to apply a little bit of dot of glue to the paper and then I'm going to um, smash it down and thin it out. Okay. So it's hardly any there. And then I'm going to take my little vellum circle and I'm going to press it on. Okay. And the idea is that there's hardly any glue there. And so as you're kind of using your finger there, you're really thinning it out. So it's basically almost dry so that when you um, apply your little dot there or your little um, bubble rather your dot, I guess this is a dot. Um, it's just going to barely stick. So just a tiny little bit of adhesive. Okay. So that is the plan there. All right. And if you can also aim to make your dot about the same size as whatever the um, size of circle is that you are going to be gluing down, that also will help because it will adhere the whole thing. But again, you're not going to be using very much adhesive. Okay. So this is a test in seeing how thin you can get your glue. All right. Uh, also, you probably already figured this out. Your fingers need to be very clean for doing this project, but then of course they're going to get very messy. Oh, I can already see that my finger made a messy mark there. Not a problem. I'm just going to overlap and do another bubble right on top of it. And if it's a little bit textured underneath it, that's okay because you do actually need to be able to see the bubbles. And if it is, if they are, if you just lay them on without putting any adhesive, you might actually not be able to see the bubbles at all. So, all right. So you can just put down as many as you feel comfortable with. I'd have no idea how many pieces of bubble, how many pieces, how many little bubbles I gave you. Okay. So hopefully you got enough there. All right. So that is a world in how you adhere vellum, even though you're not really 
you're supposed to use glue with them. You're supposed to hide your glue. So there we have our little bubbles. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to take, um, I, let's see, what do I have here? I'm going to use a super fine point pen. You want to make sure it's a pen that's going to glue or it's going to dry on your vellum. So if you have an extra bubble left over, you can always do like a little line on it and see if it's going to dry on there. So we'll just do that little test right now while we wait for the glue to totally dry. Okay. But on the other thing you're going to do with your same little black pen is that you're actually going to draw, of course, a little, you know, the little bubble blower thing. Okay. If you need to test on another piece of paper first, that's probably a good idea. In fact, I am going to test it on another little piece of paper first, just to make sure I know what I'm doing here. Let's see. So I want to do something that's kind of like this kind of shape with this kind of a thing. Oh, so cute. And then of course I'm probably going to put a little bubble behind it because that just makes sense. Like he's blowing out a little bubble. Okay. But we're going to do it on the side where he's actually going to be blowing out. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right. So now I'm just going to go ahead and draw that in. Well, I want it to be close to his mouth. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw the little circle now. Of course, it's actually very close to his mouth. And so close that I actually had to stop it or wrap it right up against his nose because of the direction the bubble was going. So that's okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue my little bubble, um, one more bubble little down. Again, doing my technique before where you just kind of thin it out just a little bit, making sure, of course, not to run into my little um, piece of a, my little ink um, there because other, if it's not a waterproof pen, you don't want that ink to smear. Oh, look how cute that is. All right. So now it's time to go back to your, um, little bubble that you drew a little line on and we're going to go ahead and we're going to run our hand over that. And if it's smearing, then you need to grab a different pen. If it's not smearing, luckily mine is not, we can draw those little tiny, um, kind of lines that are kind of curved, um, on our bubbles. Okay. And this, the idea is that this is like where the light is hitting. And then I'm also going to go back in here now with my, and I'm going to draw a little tiny dot next to my little line on some of those. Um, and the, again, the idea is this is kind of like a reflection. Okay. You can kind of see what I did there. Oh gosh, those are so cute. All right. And now with my same little black pen, I'm actually going to go in with these tiny little kind of, um, dots and there's tiny little itty bitty circles. And they, again, the idea is that the movies are just really little, little itty bitty bubbles. Okay. If your, your paper is textured, I just almost said, if your paper is textured, your paper is textured. If you're doing the same video as me, or if you got this kit, um, but you'll see that there's some, a, a little bit of texture on this paper. And because of that, um, you may want to, um, use, you draw your tiny dots on top of the little texture, um, the little tiny speckles. Um, you can also go in, you can actually trace your bubbles if you really want them to stand out a little bit more. Um, and based off of what I'm kind of seeing here and the kind of contrast, there's not really enough contrast here for me. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just draw a little black kind of half moon, um, on the, um, shadow side of the circle. And if you're not sure what the shadow side of the circle is, the shadow side is the opposite of the um, top right corner. So the shadow side is going to be the bottom left side. See how this line is bottom left, bottom left, bottom left. Okay. So I'm going to do bottom left on all of my circles. And so the vellum circles are nice because they give you a nice guide and your pen can just write up right along the, the edge of that. Okay. Um, I'm using a black slicky pen which is like the finest line gel pen that I've ever used. And it dries immediately on normal paper. So it's going, it's going to take a moment to dry on vellum, but it also dries on vellum, which is wonderful. And I'm also going to take my black pen and I'm going to just draw a little black eye and a little black nose and a little black smile. Yay. And that's just going to make him so that he kind of stands out a little bit more. Oh gosh, that is so adorable. I'm extremely happy with how that turned out. Gosh, so cute. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and glue that down on the paper. And now I've also included this um, very fun glitter, aqua glitter ribbon. I don't know if you saw me just like squeal with, well not squeal, but like squeeze my hand out of excitement and love for this ribbon. It just makes me so happy. So I'm actually going to wrap that around um, my white paper here. I'm going to wrap it this way. Um, I gave you enough, I believe, to go around this way as well if you wanted to tie a little bow. So just kind of keep that in mind. So 
I'm going to do, actually, I think I am going to go this way now that I'm thinking about it. Oops, this one. These ones are for the next craft. There's been this in the way this entire time. I'm so sorry. Okay. So I'm going to wrap this around here. I'm going to tie myself a little bow. My little bow is going to end up down up here at the top. I'm just, this is comfortable for me to tie here. I can always scoot it over. Oh my gosh, seriously? Oh man, my nose is so itchy right now. I'm sure you guys all saw the other day I was sneezing. I have been having allergies. Ah, speaking of sneeze, I may be sneezing again. Alright. I want my glitter to stay on top. There we go. Alright. I'm going to pull that tight there. Get my glitter ribbon in the right space. I'll just bend that and scoop that up. That's how I do that. Okay. Oh gosh, so cute. Now I really would like this to also have the glittery side up. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and trim this down. I usually like to do like a little diagonal, but you, of course you could trim your bow however you would like. And then I'm going to go ahead and stick my, so I'm going to go ahead and scoop my bow over first so that that lines up so I can read the whole word happy day. I'm going to go ahead and stick um, glue on the back, or if you have double sided tape, in this case, I'm going to use double sided tape. If you have glue, it's not a problem. Just make sure to put glue on the edge of your paper, and then you're going to press and hold that in place for just um, a little bit for about, oh, about 10 or 15 seconds. Um, double sided tape is just going to, it's going to be a quick, dry adhesive. There's not going to be anything wet, not to worry about anything gluing down. I always, when I use double sided tape, I always want to make sure that, um, I kind of eyeball it from up above and then I press down so that there is a eighth of an inch border on all four sides. Whew, gosh, I thought I was going to sneeze, but I didn't. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and mount that in front of my card. Oh, this is so cute. It's so cute. I just absolutely love this, you guys. Laura, thank you for this idea. So cute. Okay. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and lay the little foxy guy down. And I'm noticing here that I really would like my fox to be a little bit darker orange. If you have watercolors, you can use watercolors, you can use the markers, um, you can use um, colored pencils. I think in this case, I'm going to use a watercolor pencil because watercolor pencils going to be really fast for me. Um, watercolor pencils uh, react with water, so which means that all you have to do is you just scribble um, down some color. You really don't need very much, as long as there's a little bit of color down. I usually like to do a little bit heavier um, coloring where the shadows might be, again, which is on the bottom left. So like underneath the neck and like in the arms and stuff and like on the ears. Yeah. And then... I'm going to take my water brush again. It's just a wet, or even just a wet paintbrush works great because again, you're just, all you're doing is running your brush over that color there. And you're just going to be activating that color. And again, where the areas where you didn't put hardly any color or you had light color, that's going to be in like a light area right there. Okay. All right. And then we got a little foxy. Oh, so precious. Oh my gosh. That is a really cute card. If I do say so myself, pretty cute. I'm going to just add a little tiny bit more orange right here on his upper side there underneath his nose. A little bit more contrast there. Now remember, if you didn't use a waterproof pen, which I did not for his little eye, or for his nose, you need to make sure that you stay away from that so that you don't accidentally get a black smear. Okay. Alright, now we have it. Pretty fun. Alright, on to the next card.